Well, you all know who we're here to see. You know her from Stargate Atlantis. You know her from the LA Complex. And especially, you know her as the best Goram mechanic this side of the verse. Everybody, give a big Phoenix welcome to Jewel State! Strikes Back. <laughs> I got it at um, um, the Atlanta Aquarium in, in, uh, at Dragon Con. So, yeah. Sorry, you guys. I was I was in a room by myself, <laughs> going, "Where is everybody?" <laughs> Guess I'm not so popular anymore. Um, Th thank you for coming. I know it's it's bright and early, and this is just kind of getting wrapped up. So I really appreciate all you coming out today. It's awesome. Awesome. So for anybody who wants to ask you a question, we have a microphone right up here. So uh, we're going to talk for a few minutes while we're talking. Feel free to come up here, uh, line up by the microphone. Uh, we have uh, the lovely Kate here who will uh, help you out. And uh, so while you're lining up. Uh, Glad to have you here. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. It's been a while since I've been back in Phoenix, so it's awesome. Thanks for having me. So at what point did it dawn on you, this fandom for this show that I did so long ago is, is still alive and it's going to keep going? What, at what point was it, oh wow, this is still real to all the fans? Uh, like right now? <laughs> um, <laughs> Honestly, every time I come to, to one of these things, I'm always surprised at, at the people that still come up and want to say hello and how much they love the show. And then the, the, the new converts, which is really awesome. I did um, a convention, uh, not last weekend, but the weekend before last, with uh, Nathan. Remember that guy? <laughs> um, and it was so amazing because we hadn't done a panel together forever. And we love being, well, Nathan loves being on stage. <laughs> and, uh, and he, we did two panels, and, and at the Sunday panel, he, he tends to get a little emotional when he talks about Firefly. It was, you know, a turning point, I think, in all of our careers, and we um, associate a lot of really good memories with it. And uh, he sort of welled up. He's like, I can't believe we're still here. I can't believe we're still doing this. Look at, look at the way our, our lives have changed. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of the, the gift that keeps on giving, I guess. So thanks to all of you. We have uh, some questions here. First one, come on ahead. Thanks very much. Hi, Joel. Hello. Firefly really touched us. Thank you for all you giving us. Um, we're going to run a, a, a role-playing game set in the Firefly verse about 20 years after Serenity, and we want the players to be able to play anybody, the crew, an invented character, or the kids. So we wondered what Kaylee would call her and Simon's kids. Oh, man. That's so hard. Sorry. Yeah. Like right off the bat. What would they call their kids? No, she would probably pick something really feminine and cute. You know, like they'd have a little girl and call her Violet. Something. Yeah. Violet Tam. That's good. Thank you. I, I just came up with that right off the top of my little noodle. Wow. I think of a name for a boy before the end of the show. Okay, I will. I will. I think they would have a girl first, though. <laughs> Hi, Joel. My name's Hi. Rob. Um, I know that sometimes when, when stars are working on shows that they're allowed to keep clothes and stuff like that. So whatever became of the fluffy, <laughs> multi-layered cape dress? If I had a nickel. <laughs> You know, I don't know. I don't know what became of that one. 
Um, a lot of those, those uh, memorable pieces went away somewhere to be stored and, and I guess um, later auctioned off, hopefully. I know a lot of pieces were auctioned off for charity. Um, so yeah, it disappeared into the abyss and I was glad to see it go. <laughs> bye bye dress. <laughs> Hello. Hi, I wanted to know how it was like working with the whole cast of Firefly. Whole entire cast. <laughs> I think the best, the best thing about that, and the weirdest thing about that show, especially all these years later, I've worked on a lot of shows since then, and it was this immediate family atmosphere, right from day one. And I've never had, the echo is so weird, by the way, hearing my voice echoing back at me. Is that what I sound like? Um, yes. <laughs> um, it, it just felt, it felt like I'd known these people forever. It felt like it was the most natural thing in the world. I've never had such natural chemistry with that big of a group of people before. Usually in a cast like that, you know, there's, they, you break off. A couple of you become best friends and keep in touch after the show and then you don't really hear from anybody else for a while and it's, that's so different with this show. I adore all of those people. Um, I speak to a lot of them often and when I see them at events like this, it feels like seeing um, a relative. That's what it feels like. And we know each other so well, we're able to riff off each other so well, and they know everything there is to know about me, and that's just a nice feeling to have, always have that support, you know? Yeah, that's what I remember the most about those goofs. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I got two quick ones for okay. you. Um, first off, I'm going to comment on uh, happyallview.net, I believe oh, it is. Oh, thank you. Your food blog. I'm, I love reading it. Um, first off, do you like burgers? <laughs> okay, if you read the blog, you know I do. Okay. <laughs> Just double check. Cheeseburgers are my favorite thing. That would be my last meal. Cheeseburger. Okay. Two places you, you have to check out out here then. Um, both are in Tempe. One is Chuck Box. <laughs> we already have a ton of fans. And then the other place is a little less known, Lobby's. Fantastic burgers. Okay. Couple of fans there. Um, second question, based on the dialogue in the shows and the movie, how did you make it through with your face just not falling off from grinning all the time? All the jokes on screen, and I've seen some of the, uh, the outtakes, those I'm just rolling. How did you make it through all of that? Well, a lot of them I didn't. <laughs> a lot of them I didn't. Um, a weird thing about being on the set too, especially after, you know, hour 10 or 12 or 15, you get really tired and you start to, to get a little punchy. So the stupidest things make you laugh ridiculously hard. And then when one person gets going, all of a sudden, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a ripple effect, and then everybody's just losing it, and you become extremely unprofessional. <laughs> Which happens to me all the time. Um, and also, the craziness of it all, like, especially when you're doing sci-fi, because you're, you're, you're staring out at a green screen, and they're asking you to imagine uh, this terrifying something, something happening out there, and, and the absurdity of it. <laughs> It just hits you every once in a while, and you just laugh, because you're like, this is my job. <laughs> it's a great job, but it's weird. It's a weird job. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the burger recommendations. <laughs> Hi, Alan, uh, co-host of the uh, Gatecast, so this is Stargate Atlantis. Awesome. How did you feel coming in to SGA, and how do you feel your character and Davy Hewlett's character's art sort of came together? It was a lovely relationship to observe. I'm just looking for your thoughts on it. I, I agree with you on that. I thought I thought Keller and McKay were very well suited to each other. Um, I have a lot of girls coming up to me saying, "I can't believe she chose McKay. <laughs> Who would you choose?" And I'm like, "Why well, would choose Shepard?" But that's besides the point. Um, <laughs> whoa. 
beauty and brains. Um, I can't believe I just said that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, Keller grew up as this, this overachieving nerd who probably didn't have a ton of friends and was so obsessed with academics, and I think McKay had a similar upbringing, and they're both so intellectual, and they connected on more of an intellectual level than just the physical, so I thought that was, that was a great relationship. Coming into the show, I was terrified, um, because I knew I was replacing a very well-loved character on the show, who also happened to be one of my closest friends. So the whole thing was crazy awkward, and my first day on the show, there were um, Dr. Beckett fans outside of Bridge Studios picketing. <laughs> like, with signs and everything, y'all. And, like, it made the news. <laughs> That's how many there were. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm gonna cross a picket line <laughs> to get to work. Um, and then the other weird thing about Keller was they gave me very little background and very little to go on about who she was. They were just like, here you go and go. And I sort of had to figure her out along the way. And that's really tough to do because you're not the one writing the scripts. So every week I'd be like, oh, we're finding a new facet to Kelly's personality. I guess she's, you know, um, uh, she's a scaredy cat. That's new, okay. Um, so it was just, it, it, it took a little while longer than, let's say, Firefly, where the characters were crazy fleshed out from the very beginning, especially Kaylee for me, um, to get to know her and figure out how I was going to, to play this person. And then, of course, once we really got on a roll, we got cancelled. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Nicholas, and Hello. Um, I've been uh, TV stalking you since Space Cases. <laughs> I really, really love that show. Thank you. I'd like to see it on Netflix or a Funny or Die remake. Funny or Die remake, oh boy. Yeah, because no matter what, the child of darkness still wishes to see tomorrow. Say that again, I missed that last part. The child of darkness still wishes to see tomorrow. I, can, I can't hear it. Can somebody help me? Oh, it was a statement, it wasn't a question. Hello. My name is Emily, and um, my, my favorite character of yours was actually not Firefly. It was when Amy from Supernatural. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, though, that aside, what, what you would want to be remembered as in the future. That's a great question. Wow. What would I want to be remembered for? Um, well, I think the, the most important thing to me has, has always been um, playing the realism in a character, for the most part. As crazy and ridiculous as, as the reality is that, that that character is going through, I think your job as an actor is to um, portray that as real as best you can. So, I think I would just like to be remembered for doing that, for the most part, no matter what I was playing, um, that, that you believed me. That's, that's all I really wanted, and I think to me that's, that's the mark of somebody who's doing their job. And There are a lot of actors who, are, who get a little crazy, and <laughs> who do this method acting thing where they have to be the character all the time, and that just sounds exhausting. And also, it's called acting for a reason. <laughs> Because, you know, at the end of the day, when you're done your job, you leave that behind and you go home and you have dinner with your family, like a normal person. Um, so yeah, for the most part, I think it would just be that. Just, just being remembered for, for always believing me, whoever I play. Does that make any sense? Yes. Yeah? That was a great question. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Now, you said you were at a con a few weeks ago with Nathan. Did you guys talk about maybe you being on Castle next season? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, during our panel, he got a lot of Castle questions. And um, he would start to answer the question, and then I would say, oh, I'm sorry, what's going on? I don't watch that show. <laughs> 
then they could turn to me and go, oh, okay, and would explain, you know, the, 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 the plot of whatever it was that we were talking about. And I was like, I am fully boycotting your show now, as is Sean Ma, until we get on it. So, that's what's happening. Yes, it's um, in the first movie, so it's, like... it's it's a bit yeah it, it's it's favoritism really is what it is um, no but <laughs> he, he we've always talked about it and then I just kind of dropped it after a while and now I, I make sure to only talk about it with him when we're on stage in front of thousands of people <laughs> just to really get my point across <laughs> well I hope you do me too thank you never yeah. What was your favorite episode? Of Firefly? Yeah. To film or to watch? Mm, to film? To film, okay. I would say, not, not Shindig, because it looked dress, so <laughs> that's out. Um, I remember filming Safe was incredibly hot and really uncomfortable out in that desert, and Janestown, we filmed in this really, really smelly place. It like just reeked. Um, and we were also really hot then too. It was like super comfortable and super, I think, you know, funny enough, um, even though it has some bad memories attached to it, I remember having the most laughs on The Message, which was our last episode. And I don't know what it was. I think maybe we just, we just let everything go after we heard the news of being canceled and I just remember laughing a lot and really soaking up the moment and enjoying what we were doing as much as I could because I knew it was coming to an end. Yeah, so I would say that one. My favorite one to watch is always that of Gas. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Hi there. Um, Hi. My name is Megan. Um, I have two brief questions. The first one is, because um, I know you did a lot of television as a child, what do you think is the di biggest difference between when you were filming as a child versus when you're filming now as an adult? That's a good question. Um, you know, it, it's funny because this is all I've ever known. This is all I've ever done as a job for 25 years now. And um, When I was a kid, <laughs> especially on, on something like Space Cases, which was my first lead in a series, I, I just remember you know, this big uh, craft service table <laughs> with lots of candy and stuff on it and going, wow, I can eat that whenever I want. Um, and, and then also, they do they, the, as per union rules, our, our actors union, um, you have to do a certain amount of hours of school work a day. So they would have a tutor on the set and she would be standing by with her arms crossed waiting for me to finish the scene or take or whatever it was. And as soon as I sat down to continue with my work, she would start the timer again. And I, I remember that just being such a drag. <laughs> you know, like I was like, oh my God, I just want to hang out. I just want to eat candy and hang out with everybody. Um, so yeah, it was always balancing the schoolwork with that, for the most part, getting, getting that done as well as, as working a job, which is always odd when you're a kid. Um, yeah, and now when I see the kids going into tutoring on set, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> not fun, is it? Yeah. <laughs> My other question was about when um, you got you and um, the gentleman who plays Simon were cast in Warehouse 13. Was that planned, or was it one of you was cast and the other one was like, oh, you want to do this with me, or...? Well, they kind of tricked us there, um, <laughs> because they told me they were thinking of, um, of doing this storyline. They said, we've got Sean interested. So, so he would play the, the male lead, and, and if we can get you, that would be great. And then they told Sean the same thing. <laughs> Which is smart, smart thinking. Um, so yeah, it, we, and then he texted me and was like, what's the deal with this thing? And I was like, I don't know, what's the deal with this thing? And he's like, well, apparently I have to wear like a purple leotard, so I'm not doing this unless you're doing it. Um, but yeah, and then that was another one of those things where it was, I think our first day of work, we worked 18 hours on set. It was crazy. And they had these huge wind machines on us because he has these like superpowers and makes the room shake or whatever it was he was doing. Um, magical underwear, I believe. <laughs> Dead serious, if you haven't seen it. Um, <laughs> 
And every time I looked at the guy in this purple suit, I would just howl. <laughs> it was the funniest thing in the world. And then he would start laughing, and the two of us were just crying. We were laughing so hard with this like crazy wind machine on us. It was the most bizarre week of work. But good memories with that one. Thank you. Thank you. You guys got some good ones today. Hi, I'm Judd, and first off, I want to say I'm a major fan of Firefly and Sarge Atlantis. And the question I want to ask is, like, how did you end up getting the role for being like the lead doctor in Sarge Atlantis? Well, in season, I think it was, uh, I better get this right. I think it was season two. Um, I played a wraith on the show. I was the, the only wraith raised by, by a human. So she was like a wraith with a heart of gold until she got hungry. Um, and I had never seen the show, and they said, um, I, I got this notice in from my, from my agent, I was on hiatus, and she said, oh, there's this park coming up on Stargate Atlantis, it shoots at home, and I was like, shoots at home, yay, um, I'll go out for that. So I auditioned, not knowing what a wraith was, and it said on the, the breakdown, the character breakdown, some prosthetics required. <laughs> They trick you in this business a lot. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I went in an audition, and apparently, later after I was offered the role, the producer said when I walked in, they were all like, why is, why is Kaylee from Firefly auditioning for our show right now? Um, so it was meant to be, it was great. Um, they asked me if I would come back, and I said, I'll come back as anything you want but that. Because it was hell. Um, it was 3.45 a.m. call time to get into makeup, and then at the end of the day, um, I would stay an hour later to get it all taken off. And it was incredibly uncomfortable, and I wore these big fit contact lenses, and so my eyes were bothering me, and just a bit of a nightmare. So I was like, con I was very quiet on set that week. I was constantly in the happy place. <laughs> I was. I was like meditating. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I guess a year later, they called and said, well, do you want to come on as a regular, as, as our new doctor? And I was like, yeah. Um, so it was just a dream, because again, it shot at home, and I'm, I, I very rarely get to work in Vancouver, and uh, I got to sleep in my own bed for three years. How great is that? I'm Talia, and I've heard that both Nathan Fillion and Jared Paldecki are like legendary pranksters. First off, who's the bigger prankster? And second, what's the best prank that was ever played on you, and who did it? Well, Nathan is a slow prankster, and not that he's dumb. Um, I mean, like, I mean slow in the other way. Like, he, he, he's very methodical about his pranks, so they take a long time. Um, and Jared is sort of like, hey, look at me, and we'll just do something ridiculous to make you laugh 20 times a day. Um, which is really funny because Jensen is the polar opposite of that. Jensen is calm, he's, he's so soft-spoken and sweet, and he's very much the older brother. And Jared can kind of go crazy as much as he wants. He's like a, a great Dane puppy. <laughs> he knocks everything over. And, but he's hysterical. I remember um, when we were shooting, I'm supposed to, to turn around at one point to face him, and he has this um, prop knife, and he's sticking it in the cameraman's ear <laughs> the whole time while he's talking to me, just to, to make me laugh. But, you know, Nathan, Nathan just, he thinks too much. He has way too much time on his hands, and he's devious, and... You know, he's the guy that sticks lotion under the door handle of your trailer and, like, waits for you to... For a long time, for, for you to, to go back into your trailer. He's that guy. He scares me a little bit. But, man, he's gotten me good many, many a time, believe me. I've gotten him good, too. Hello again. Hello. How are you? Doing good. How are you? Good. Good. So if the Titanic is going down, oh boy, oh you're on the debris. There's obviously room for two people. Are you going with Joe Flanagan or Nathan Fillion? <laughs> Bro, it isn't even noon. What is going on? Okay. 
Well, I will say this. Um, Nathan and I are, are super duper close friends. And he does make me laugh. Um, and he's super resourceful. He's kind of like MacGyver. I don't know if you know this, but Nathan makes his own Halloween costumes every year. And they get more and more and more elaborate. Like last year, he just had a suit and he rigged it with lights all around it, everywhere, the whole perimeter and designs on the front, and then he had a remote. So anytime he clicked a button on the remote, it would switch into a different shape on the suit. So he was like, I got 20 costumes. And I was like, do you have a job? Like, why do you have all this free time? Um, but like I said, he's super resourceful. So if we were to live, I'm guessing we live in this scenario. Okay. Um, I, I would go with Nathan, because I, I really, I, I think he would pull through for me. Joe would just be like, what's going on? He'd, he'd just sort of, <laughs> I don't know what Joe would do. He'd be like, where's Jason? Thank you. That was my really bad Joe planning in a commercial. Hi, Kaylee. Please don't put that on the internet, holy shit. I was curious, in the episode of the uh, convention where you and uh, McKay go, and it's his work ripped off of the wormhole, how much fun did you have being either lectured or joking around with like Bill Nye and all those scientists? <laughs> That was fun. Um, yeah, we shot this episode of Stargate with um, Neil deGrasse Tyson and, and Bill Nye as our, uh, our guest stars. And Neil was having the time of his life. Like, I've never seen anyone have more fun on the set. Neil was just stoked to be there. Anytime it was his turn for his line, he was like revving up for it. He was so excited. Um, <laughs> And I had this really bizarre conversation with Neil, where you know, we were talking about what we do for fun, and, blah, blah, blah. and I said, well, I love to go to Hawaii every year, I love to go to Maui, that's sort of my, my, my reward at the end of, of a work year. And um, he's like, oh yeah, do you, do you own a house there? And I said, no, I don't, not yet, but you know, that's, that's what I'm working towards, that's what I would like. And he's like, well, I wouldn't do that, because there's a meteor headed, and I believe it will hit Hawaii, and it will decimate the entire state. But knock yourself out. You just have been like 30, 35 years. And I was like, what? <laughs> like super weird. And Bill Nye is, <laughs> he's kind of a ladies man. He is. He was like, what's, he's like, it's Friday night. Is uh, everybody going out after work? Or what's going on? And I was like, I don't know. And he was like, well, I, uh, I have a quick uh, salsa dancing class. And then, like, that's his hobby. <laughs> or tango or something crazy. I was like, what? And, and uh, we all ended up going out that night for, for drinks at their hotel. And it was the most bizarre scene. And next to us was the cast of Defying Gravity. Do you guys remember that very short lived show, Defying Gravity? Um, and they were at the table next to us. And here we are. And Bill Nye's had a couple cocktails. And he decides he's going to perform some crazy experiment. And he's like... <laughs> He asked the waitress for some weird, you know, items. Do you have any matches? Do you have any this? And she's like getting more and more worried. <laughs> and then he's like lighting something on fire. And, you know, it was just the most bizarre crowd of characters. And um, who else was there? Who was our other guest star? I'm blanking on his name now. You know who I'm talking Dave Foley. Dave Foley from um, News Radio and Kids in the Hall was also there. So just very strange. And then the rapper Chaos, who I'm friends with. I don't know if you guys have heard of him, came in the door for a drink as well. So it was like Chaos and Bill Nye and Dave and me and like this, this very, and the, the cast of Divine Gravity was like, oh my god, what's going on? There's a bonfire in the table. Um, that was a fun one. That was a good time. I better get on that place in Hawaii, apparently. Hi, I'm Lauren. Hi, I like your costume. Thank you. That is representing. <laughs> person who likes to cosplay as one of your characters, I was also wondering, if you had the chance to cosplay as at something like this, who would you want to cosplay as? From Firefly? As, any, the, anything? No, as, as anything at all. Like oh, your wow. favorite show, anything. Oh my gosh. Wow. I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> I, I mean, my favorite shows are, 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 they're really, they're lame. They're like cooking shows and stuff. <laughs> I'm not joking. Um, I also really loved Lost so much. Um, yeah. 
So that would be fun to do something in there. But I've always, you know, I, I think every actress just wants to be like the kick-ass girl, the superhero type girl. So just something like that, you know, something, something where I could, where I could be the one saving the day instead of cowering in a corner. Would you make your own super person with cosplayers? Yes, yes. Let's make that up. I need a superhero power. My buddy Mike Choi. Do you guys know who Mike Choi is? He's an artist, comic book artist. He's here this weekend, he's a good friend of mine, and uh, he owes me a favor. So I'll get him to create that, and I'll get back to you. Hi, my Hello. name is Shalina. Um, I was wondering what your favorite quote from Firefly was. Aww, and if you could recite it. Sure. Um, there's so many good quotes from that show. Oh. Um, I love a lot of Nathan's quotes, actually. When he says in Out of Gas, everybody dies alone, that puts a lump in my throat immediately. Um, and then I love, Wash, tell me I'm pretty. <laughs> that was a fun scene. There's so many good ones. There's a lot of good ones from Serenity, too, that I, I really adore. Um, yeah, that Joss, he's pretty talented. <laughs> You want me to say it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Shiny. There you go. Yeah. My boyfriend gets me to say that. I know that's weird and sick, but like, he, well, he's, he's not an actor, he's a, he's a, he's a scientist, and, and so I, I told him about Firefly, he came to a convention with me, and he was like, what is this madness? He's like, they love you, dude. And so he started watching the show just to see what all the fuss was about. He was like, I really love Kaylee. He's like, I wish when you were mad at me that you were like that. <laughs> so when I'm like, you know, in one of my moods or whatever, he's like, piss me off. He's like, babe, babe, just say, just say shiny. Everything <laughs> shiny. And I just want to kill him more. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so Hi. first I want to say that I love Firefly. I just start watching it. I watch it every night. Like, it's really dorky, but I love it. And, um, I want to ask, like, what's your favorite scene or, like, most intense scene that you shot or, like, that you just like? I think definitely the, the most intense for me was um, the scene where I get shot. Just because I, for lots of reasons, it was our first week on the job, so we didn't all really know each other very well. I think that was Morena's first day, actually, because she was the last person cast um, in the show, so she really didn't know anybody. Um, she was like, I'm a space hooker? No, she knew she was. Uh, but yeah, so they basically, they had this fancy prosthetic that was built, you know, with the hole and a squib in it. Um, and, uh, you know, lots of stuff for, for blood to spurt out and leak over my, my coveralls. And when you're, when you're raked with, with squibs, <laughs> it's scary. It, 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 never, it never gets easier. And I've had a giant squib for the show I did called the LA Complex right here in my chest. Because there's this gag where my character gets, uh, she's working, she's an actress and works on a show and gets shot in the chest. So it was enormous. And you feel it, no matter what. Um, it's like a little, just a little punch. But things can go wrong, and the stunt guys that do rig you up, it's their job to tell you all the things that can go wrong. So, they, so this may happen, it probably won't. But if this does happen, and I'm like, please don't tell me that. Um, so I just can't wait to get the, the squib off me. Um, and my heart's just going like crazy. So I remember that being a really scary, intense day. And then the thing went off, I went back, I felt it, and kind of fell to the ground, and I'm doing my thing, and then Nathan bends over and he split his pants all the way up. <laughs> and he was like, he stopped and he was like, I'm so sorry everybody, I assumed I split my pants. <laughs> You thought that was just a nickname. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this line is crazy. It's like the permission. I know, I better hurry up. My stories are, I'm very long-winded. Um, um, I have two really quick questions for you. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm a steampunk. Uh, awesome. And one of the reasons that I love Firefly so much is that it crosses over with steampunk a lot in very nice ways. How do you feel about steampunk? <laughs> Well, I, I actually quite dig steampunk, and, it, and it, it took me a few conventions to figure out what that even was. 
Um, but then I met a gentleman who creates steampunk jewelry, and I have this really cool necklace that has a, a, a clock on the end of it. It's like a little ball um, uh, with a brass ring around it, and you can see the clock working, you can see the mechanics of the clock. It's pretty cool. Uh, the second question I have is actually about Wonder Falls. Um, I saw it after I saw Firefly, so I'm like, I love Kaylee! And then your character on Wonder Falls is just so heartbreaking. Yeah, she's not the nicest girl. So, <laughs> I know. How do you feel about that role? I had fun. I mean, I love playing um, really nasty characters. It's, it's fun. It's super fun. Especially ones like that that you can just kind of get really big and, and um, go for it. And that character was always, we, we, we built her wardrobe uh, really well from the very beginning, so I was always running around in these super tight matching track suits. And you remember those sneakers with the high heels? She loved those. And I had super long, like, French manicured nails and was always kind of done in the fur coat and everything. So I was just, I was able to, to go to town. So that was fun. And that, that was a great show. It, it didn't get the run it deserved. As most of them don't. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Ellie. Um, I'm a big fan, been a fan pretty much since I was a little kid. Um, and I just, I, I've seen so many of the things that you've done, and I was going to ask you about Wonder Falls, same question. But um, which character do you identify most with that you've ever played? Well, that's tough because I think. I, I don't know if I if I do any of them really. I, I I think I can't help but put a little piece of myself in everybody I've played. Um, but for the most part, yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard to look back and identify on that. Mostly, I just identify with the memory associated with the show. I know exactly where I was in my life. I know exactly what was happening. And and um, a lot of shows, luckily, hold a lot of really great memories, especially Firefly. I mean, I really that was the turning point. I I think in my career, it was it was. Um, Definitely one of the things I'm most proud of, um, and and look what's happened to me. You know, I'm still here doing this, talking talking to you about that show. Amazing, amazing. And who knew that you had the legs that that it, it does to, to stand on? And so yeah, I think for the most part, I just I really think about the memory associated with the project more than anything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Um, Hi. I'm actually here from New York, and oh, cool. I, love you. I uh, was at the 10th anniversary oh, there awesome. at Comic Con. That was so fun. I wanted to thank you for coming to New York. We didn't really get the full San Diego thing, but that you let us be a part of that. Oh, it was my pleasure. It was super fun. And my question is, so as a fan of Firefly, sometimes I think, you know, I will never be over the cancellation of Firefly. I'll be on my deathbed. Be like, <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> but as an actress, you know, it was a job to you and it clearly meant a lot, but can you imagine 50 years from now how you'll feel about Firefly and everything that happened with that? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, for, for us, we, we definitely felt like we had some closure with the movie. Um, I know you, you guys maybe don't feel that way, but, but for us as actors, it was just, it, it felt like, you know, the, the rug was pulled out from under us so quickly um, when we did get canceled in the show, so it was really nice to, um, to have that, to have, to have this, this story that was going to be a four-month shoot, four glorious months, where we were treated like kings by the studio, and they were so behind it, and, and really loved the project and believed in it a lot. Um, so it just felt good. It was such a positive thing, positive experience. Um, so we felt like we had the closure there. But it, I'm, so glad, I'm so glad I like those people because we're still doing these things and we enjoy them so much. And I think that's the fact that Nathan is still doing them. I mean, I know he took a few years off, but he, I don't know if you've heard, but he's back in the convention circuit and he's decided to come back to them. And, and the reason is because it's like, it's fun. It's fun. And it's fun to see, you know, the, our, our friends again, our, our cast members again, and spend good quality time with them and then keep reliving this memory. It's such a good memory that I'm always going to want to relive it. Does that make sense? Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Hi, my name is Chris. And obviously you're really familiar with how strong the fandom is on this side of the camera. 
But you see influences of Firefly and other shows. You know, there's a lot of writers and producers and directors that put you know little things, especially in Castle, and you can't get away from them there. But even in Warehouse That's 13, mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but even in Warehouse 13, I mean, it really felt like oh, it's a little wink, wink to all of us who go, is that really what happened? Oh wow! And then Magic Iron Pants obviously was super great. But how do you feel about that when you look at it and say it's really crossed over not just from us who watched it, but it's influenced other people and what they like to put in their shows? It's always nice. I, lo I love seeing those little winks. Um, somebody told me there was some, I don't know, there was a Google thing that was happening, um, a Google glitch or something, and then they programmed it so my voice came up and said everything's shiny. <laughs> something wasn't working, and I was like, wow, like, that's crazy. But I told everybody about that one. I was so proud of that, I was like, guess what, guess what? Um, so yeah, that stuff, that's never gonna get old. And, and also, the, the people that are in these positions at these shows, you know, if, if an executive producer is a fan, he, he's gonna remember you, and, and he's, he's also gonna know what you can do, which is really nice. Um, I really do believe that it's given all of us uh, such, a, such a new window. Um, in the industry, and, and it's it's so nice. It's such a nice thing to, to be remembered for. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Uh, Kaylee was my favorite character from Firefly. Thank you. You're just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite memory overall from the series? Um, I would say just um, the the socializing we all did, the parties and, and all that. We had a lot of... Um, a lot of downtime spent together, and uh, Nathan would would throw these these charade parties at his house. We'd play charades and, and um, Pictionary and all kinds of games. <laughs> there's so many good moments from those stupid parties. Um, but one of my favorites was I don't know how Alan missed the boat, but he did as usual, and uh, he didn't realize that Gina was engaged at the time to Lawrence Fishburne. They're married now. Um, but he just didn't clue in. And um, we're all at this party, and, and um, Nathan, or uh, Alan's late, of course. And uh, he, he runs outside to go get something, and, and Lawrence is outside having a cigarette. And Alan comes back in and he goes, um, Lawrence Fishburne is outside. <laughs> and we were like, yeah. And he's like, how do, you, I do, how do you know Lawrence Fishburne? And we were like, he's engaged to Gina. Did you not know that? And he's like, oh my, God. he was so shocked. And then he was like really uncomfortable because you know, he'd been making out with Gina on the show and he was like, oh, I was so nervous. And you know, we're all sitting there and having drinks and whatnot and, and playing the game and Alan leans over and he grabs a, uh, his beer and takes a sip and Lawrence goes, that's mine. And Alan was like, Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And he was like, oh, we share the same girl, so. <laughs> and of course the ice was broken, we all laughed. Um, so yeah, there were just a lot of really, really good memories at, at, at those parties. And we still have those things that go on whenever we, we get to any convention. I never really talk to Adam outside of conventions, but as soon as he knows I'm at an event, I just get one text, where are we eating? <laughs> That's all it says. Because he knows me, he knows I'm such a food nerd that I always research the city before I get there and like make all my reservations at restaurants and he just tags along and he's like, I got the wine, you get the food and that's our thing, that's just what we do. Um, so yeah, I feel like I just have all these little rituals with, with each one of them, you yeah. know? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Who are you supposed to be? <laughs> hey. Um. I just got my degree in physics, and part of that is because I love science fiction. So every time I watch science fiction, I can't help but kind of pick it apart. So when you watch like TV shows and movies, do you kind of like watch it and go, oh, I would have done that differently or done that differently? Definitely when I watch myself. That's a nightmare. Like, I, anytime I watch myself, I'm like, oh god, ugh, gross, I hate that, why do you do that? Um, so that's, that's usually really difficult for me. I'm not wild about watching myself. Um, but other shows, yeah, it's, it's hard to watch it, um, 
from the outside perspective, because I know how they shot it, or I'll say, I'll be watching something, I'll be like, wow, that was one whole continuous shot. That was amazing, and I rewind it, and I'm like, yeah, they didn't, there's no cuts there. Um, so stuff like that really excites me, and I nerd out a little bit. Um, but, you know, it also really annoys the people I'm watching things with. <laughs> Like I'll be like, I didn't really believe that. And my boyfriend's like, what? It's this big emotional scene. And I'm like, I just didn't really buy it. I didn't really buy her. And he's like, can you stop? Just stop. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Hi. Um, I, Keely's always been one of my favorite characters from Firefly for many reasons. I think everything about her is just perfect. But one of my favorite things is the way that ever, like, she meshed perfectly the whole tomboy and girly thing just completely. And I, I love her style for that. And I was, my favorite thing about it was her um, hammock in, on the Serenity in the little engine room. And I was wondering, was that comfortable, the <laughs> hammock? Because I, I, I love hammocks. I think they're cool. And I was just wondering if that one was an awesome hammock. You know, I'm one of those people that gets nervous in a hammock. Because <laughs> I know I'm going to wipe out. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that particular hammock did not, it was not stable. I feel it was not that comfortable, no, unfortunately. That's a thing with a lot of sets. A lot of things look really comfortable. And then you'll go to throw yourself on a couch and it's like made of rocks. And it's insanely, you know, uncomfortable. Or a wall will look really steady and you'll lean on it and there it goes. Um, yeah, sorry to disappoint you. Two questions, actually. Uh, Firefly is the only one of your things that I've seen because I just got into that recently. And like, awesome, oh, she's a new cool convert. Actress. I should look at her other stuff. I love it. <laughs> um, I have two questions. First of all, what kind of projects do you have coming up? Well, I just, oh man, I just wrapped this thing. It's so stupid because they won't let me talk about it. It's so dumb. Um, a lot of these shows, it, it's it's not sci-fi. I'm sorry to say, um, and it's not. Serenity 2, so relax. Uh, but a lot of these, these shows nowadays with um, you know, crime thriller plot points, there's a hint for you, uh, they, they make you sign non-disclosure agreements. Like, they're crazy about it. Um, I only get my scenes. I don't even get a full script of the episodes. So I have no idea what's going on. And we're all treated that way on the show. Um, it's a little nuts, a little over the top. But uh, yeah, uh, hopefully soon they'll, they'll give me the green light to talk about it. The, it's season three of, of whatever show it is. Um, and I, so I, I sound ridiculous. Um, and I joined the cast in season three. And it should, I think their, their season three premiere is in July, late July or something like that. And I might be in the, the promo clip. So if you follow me on Twitter, I will let you know as soon as I can let you know. But aside from that, it's, it's ridiculous secrecy at the moment. And then my other question is, were there any um, storylines coming up in Firefly that you were really looking forward to making that you didn't get to? Like, um, were they never, of those? Well, Joss never really told us any of the storylines um, until we got the script, which was always fun and it's super exciting because, you know, he's Joss. Um, <laughs> he's a good writer. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we knew of, of certain secrets that characters were, were holding that we really were so excited to um, be able to talk about. Uh, like Shepard Book's secret and, and Inara's secret, which is heartbreaking. Um, so yeah, there were little secrets and things like that that I really wanted people to know. And, and that was frustrating because there was just so much unfinished business there, you know? Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have time for probably just a couple more questions. Hi. Uh, Hi. My name's Liz, and uh, sorry about the heat here in Phoenix. I love the heat. Oh, really? Okay. I do. I'm, I'm from Canada, <laughs> so I need some heat in my life. <laughs> so my question was, what attracted you to the sci-fi industry? Um, well, you know, it's just good parts. Um, I never really made a conscious choice to... to um, remain or join any particular industry, it just, it just happened that way because I really liked the parts I was being offered and I really liked the experiences I was being offered too. That's the other thing, you know, it's, it's a business ultimately and when you sign on to a project you are agreeing to work in a certain spot for X amount of time and with a certain group of people for X amount of time so you should be really sure 
that you want to uh, film there and work with those people because, you know, it, 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 for me anyway, it's always all about quality of life. That's more important to me than anything else. Um, so yeah, I drifted away again, didn't I? Yeah. I'm glad to have you in the industry. Thank you. Hi, so my name is Timothy. Hi. Um, I do have a question for you. Um, who was the best person that you've actually worked with in any series and why? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's like, who's my favorite sibling? <laughs> and I have four sisters and two brothers. That's tough. And I know who my favorite is. <laughs> I do. Um, <laughs> I don't know, you know? I, I, it's funny, when you spend all that time with people, you... you uh, create a weird bond that never goes away. Um, so I would say I've taken at least one or two of those relationships from everything that I've worked on, um, even really obscure stuff. Um, and Amanda Tapping is here this weekend. Yeah. Uh, fans of I almost said, are you guys friends with Amanda Tapping? Uh, <laughs> I haven't had any caffeine. Um, but yeah, she's, she's a really good example. We, we really bought it on that show. I haven't seen her now for a couple years, we were saying, I think, last night. And it's like no time has passed. You know, we just sit down and hang out and get to talking and gossiping and all of that. So, so yeah, I, I would say at least one or two from, from everything I've done. Thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, we are at the end of our time now, so we're going to have oh. to say goodbye. Thank you, everybody, for coming. You guys, thank you so much. for being here.